So the brain, so beautiful, so complex, often the root of our problems, but also the solution to our problems. Sometimes our greatest ally, and sometimes it can be a royal pain in our ass. And have you ever thought, who is the one that is telling us that the brain is so amazing? So maybe a little bit narcissistic as well. But before we dive too far into that, everyone, my name is Dr. Dan. I'm a pharmacist turned weight management specialist, and I'm back here today to talk about a very exciting topic. We're going to dive into the brain itself and the brain and the parts that it has that really play the biggest roles in terms of obesity management. As always, though, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below so that you don't miss another episode. As well, check me out on my other channels at The Official Dr. Dan, where I post content every single day. And check me out on my website, healthcareevolve.ca. So what does the brain have to do with our weight? Isn't it our metabolism and how many calories our body burns and the food that we eat and all those kinds of things? The reality is our brain has just about everything to do with our weight. And this is likely going to be like a multi-part series, maybe two, maybe three, maybe four. I'm going to have to just let my brain ultimately decide. And I want to share with you how I kind of conceptualize and think about the brain and its involvement in our weight and our patterns, our behaviors, and how I often explain it to clients and patients in order to help them understand what it is exactly that we are dealing with. Now, there's similar explanations out there. Some people use more detail. Some people use less detail. I really like my analogy. I am obviously biased towards it, and my brilliant brain is going to say it is the best analogy because, well, it's the one that came up with it. Now, I generally think of our brains as having two parts. The first part is the primal brain. Some people might call it the limbic brain, the lizard brain, the ancient brain, in case you've ever heard of one of those terms. The second part is what I call the modern brain, and you might have heard of this as the executive functioning, the prefrontal cortex. It allows basically for a higher thought processes uh, organization, creativity, yada yada. Now, these two parts of the brain remind me of my brother and I growing up. As with any good pair of siblings, we were constantly fighting, and me, of course, being the older brother, I picked on him, I bullied him, you know, to, to help build character, right? Now, my little brother is, of course, bigger than me, and so instead of physically fighting, I prefer a much more diplomatic approach. And of course, our entire childhood wasn't me beating him up and picking on him. We had some very great bonding moments as well, albeit they were just few and far between. Our primal brain and our modern brain have a similar relationship. Most of the time, they're fighting and duking it out, but other times they're able to work together and achieve some incredible results. So let's start with the primal brain. And as you probably guessed at this point in time, our primal brain is an older part of our brain, which means it evolved many, 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 many more years before our modern brain did. And it's actually the part of our brain that we share most closely with animals. And essentially, the main function of the primal brain is to keep you alive no matter what. Not only in both recognizing and avoiding danger, but also keeping everything in homeostasis, or that's a big science-y word for in balance. So if you're cold, that means you're off balance, so your primal brain says, go put on a coat. Or if you're feeling a little feisty and you want to make fathers across the globe angry, you can go turn up the thermostat. Similarly, if the primal brain detects that the body is hungry and needs calories, it's going to say, hey, go find some food. And the colder and more hungry you are, the more powerful those signals from the primal brain are going to become and to push you to go and change your state, to either warm yourself up or to find some kind of nutrition food source. You know those times where you eat very little through the day and figuratively, and in my case, literally, feel like you can eat a horse? Yeah, in those kinds of cases, your primal brain is not very happy with you. And you might have also noticed that it tends not to be the salad and the plate of broccoli that you're craving. It's going to be the highly palatable and amazingly delicious food that seem to be made by the gods, such as fries, cake, burgers, pizza, that sort of thing. It knows that the plate of fries is not only going to provide it the calories and nutrients it needs right now, it also knows it is going to taste effing delicious. Now, another major point that we want to keep in mind here is that the primal brain, it always gets its way. One way or another, if you resist and fight it long enough, it will always win. You might think you have amazing willpower and tenacity, but if your primal brain wants and needs something bad enough, it is going to find a way to get it. And that's because it is being driven by biology. And biology 
always wins. I kind of like the analogy of Jurassic Park here where nature always finds a way. Yeah, same kind of thing. Nature and biology are going to do the magical things that they do, and whether it's creating more dinosaurs to wipe out the human race, or it's to get you to eat the pizza that's sitting in front of you, it will find a way. Now, you're probably wondering, well, if our primal brain is so focused on keeping us alive, why wouldn't it have us crave the healthy plate of broccoli? I mean, that's going to keep us healthy and keep us alive for longer, no? Well, there's two reasons why you don't crave the plate of broccoli. Number one, your primal brain is what we call a hedonist. It wants all of the pleasure and none of the pain. And if you think about it, when was the last time broccoli gave you a mouth orgasm? Probably the only time it might have happened is when it was covered in the wonderful, amazing goodness of melted cheese. Fries, on the other hand, I mean, have you ever had fresh McDonald's french fries after an evening bender? Yeah, I, I rest my case. Number two, your primal brain is entirely focused on the present. You see, your primal brain couldn't give two flying fucks if 10 years from now eating this plate of fries is going to lead to a heart attack. Its only focus is keeping you alive right now, and that plate of fries is going to do a much better job of keeping you alive than that plate of broccoli right now. You see, your primal brain can be a bit dramatic, and if it's detecting that the body is hungry and there's no nutrients coming into the body, it's automatically going to jump to the fact that, hey, we're going through the zombie apocalypse right now, all the movies are coming true, and whatever food we can get our hands on, we need to get as much of it and consume as much of it as we possibly can because we gotta, we gotta survive the, the zombie apocalypse. So you can think of the primal brain kind of like an old man that is set in his ways. You see, the primal brain was developed for a world that existed 30,000 years ago, where danger was lurking around every corner, and the shit that we take for granted today, such as food, shelter, and clothing, were really, really tough to come by. Now, clearly this old man has done some really fantastic work in keeping us alive over the last 30,000 years and supporting us in creating the society that we now have. However, this old man is now yelling at kids to get off of his lawn and refusing to adapt and change to our ever-advancing society. I know, he sounds like a crusty pain in the ass. And to be quite honest, we have only covered what I consider the biological part of the primal brain today. So that is it for today, my friends. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and make sure you turn on your alert so that you get the notification when the next episode of this series comes out. Of course, check me out at my other channels at the official Dr. Dan and check out my website, healthcareevolved.ca if you are needing help with managing your primal brain. And until next time, always remember, biology wins every single time.